Good day everyone. Welcome to my program, There is Hope in Jesus Christ. The name of today's message is called, He is a God of Order. He is referring to Jehovah God. And what I'll be doing is using a couple of scripture readings just to emphasize the message. And the purpose of this message is for us as Christians to reflect upon the restoration of order in the church. Father God, thank you for this word that you have placed in my heart to share to your people. I pray, O oh Lord, that lives will be changed and I pray that people will take this message seriously. I pray, O oh Lord, that this will not be a message that will offend people, O oh Lord, but will bring them to truth and unto righteousness. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So what is order? Order is any established succession or harmonious relation. It follows a, an, a proper pattern of doing things. And the opposite of order is disorder, and disorder speaks of chaos. And we don't serve a God of chaos, but we serve a God who is who's an, an orderly God. In everything that he does, he does it in, a, in an order. So let's look at our first scripture reading. This is taken from the book of Genesis, the first chapter. I will be going from verse 1 to 31. This is what it says. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament, from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters upon under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree, tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day, and God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great wheels and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly, after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the sea, and let fowl multiply, multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, 
and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over everything that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every hill bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given every green hill for meat. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Chapter 2, we're just going to read from verse 1 to 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. So, from reading this long chapter into chapter 2, this is a popular story which speaks about the creation of the heavens and the earth. And, you know... What amazes me about the story is not the creation of the earth, but how God did it, in that it took him seven days to do this. Now, this is Almighty God. If he wanted, he could have done this in a moment, in a second, in a day. But he chose to follow a process. He did little by little. He followed a pattern. And to me, this is the first example, really, of God showing that he's a God of order. Let's look now at... Genesis chapter 6 verse 14 to 16 Now this book is this chapter speaks about Noah and the ark and we are well aware of the flood that came and wiped out a, a large portion of humanity But what we'll see here is that you know again God is showing that he's a God of order and that he gave He gave Noah specifics on how to build the ark he didn't just tell him to, to see if he could build something that could protect you from the flood. He gave him specifics, and this is another example that Jehovah is a God of order. So let's just read from verse 14 to 16, and this is what it says. Make thee an ark of go forward. Room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch, with, pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. The breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. A window shall thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shall thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shall thou set in the side thereof, with lower second and two stories shall thou make it. So here we see God actually, you know, commanding Noah how he should do it. You know, in terms of the length, the breadth, the width. As far as which wood to use, because there will be many different trees to use. So God has a specific way of doing things. Jehovah is an orderly God. Let's look at yet another scripture reading. This is from the book of Joshua. And this is chapter 6 from verse 1 to 5. And Joshua is the book that's right after Deuteronomy. So let's look at another example of God being a God of order. Now, in this, this is actually the story of the walls of Jericho. And we know about around the walls of Jericho, it's a song that we sing. And what happened is that the walls of Jericho came down. We know about that, but what we don't know is that there was an order of things to be done for the walls of Jericho to fall down. God gave Joshua commandment what to say to the people. So let's just look at, at the specifics of what had to be done for the walls of Jericho to fall down. You know, if the Israelites had not followed this, maybe the walls of Jericho may not have come down. So this is what it says from verse 1 to 5 on Joshua chapter 6. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thou shalt do this six days. 
and seven priests shall bear the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns and the seven day ye shall compass the city seven times and the priests shall blow with the trumpets and it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with a ram's horn and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet all the people shall shout with a great shout and the wall of the city shall fall down flat and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him so we see in the number of priests the number of times you have to blow the trumpet the number of times that the people had to walk around the walls of jericho and then they had to make a loud shout so here we are seeing order once more let's look at exodus chapter 25 and that is the book right after genesis from verse 10 to 20 and this is the making of the ark of the covenant yet another showing that god is a god of of, of order we're not going into the entire thing so from verse 10 to 20 this is what it says with regards to the making of the ark of the covenant and they shall make an ark of shittim wood two cubics and a half shall be the length thereof and a cubic and a half the breadth thereof and a cubic and a half the height thereof and thou shalt overlay it with pure gold within and without shalt thou overlay it and shall make upon it a crown of gold round about and thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it and put them in the four corners thereof and two rings shall be in the one side of it and two rings in the other side of it and thou shalt make staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold and thou shalt put the staves into the rings by the sides of the ark that the ark may be borne with them the staves shall be in the rings of the ark they shall not be taken from it and thou shalt put into the ark the testimony which i shall give thee and thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold two cubics and a half shall be the length thereof and a cubic and a half the breadth thereof and thou shalt make two cherubims of gold of beaten wood shall thou make them in the two ends of the mercy seat and make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other end even of the mercy seat shall ye make the cherubims on the two ends thereof and the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high covering the mercy seat with their wings and their faces shall look one to another to what the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubims be so here we see yet another specific example of God giving instructions in terms of how the Ark of the Covenant was to be built, the length, what what to use, what type of wood to use, where he wanted the cherubims to be facing, the mercy seat, you know. These are some more specifics. Exodus chapter 26, next chapter from 1 to 6. And this is the final example I'll be giving or showing you that he's a God of all of order. Moreover, thou shalt make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet with cherubims of common cunning wood shall thou make them. The length of one curtain shall be eight and twenty cubits, and the breadth of one curtain four cubits, and every one of the curtains shall have one measure. The five curtains shall be coupled together one to another, and other five curtains shall be coupled one to another. And thou shalt make loops of blue upon the edge of the one curtain from the selvage in the coupling, and likewise shall, shall thou make in the uttermost edge of another curtain in the coupling of the second. Fifty loops shall thou make in the one curtain, and fifty loops shall thou make in the edge of the curtain that is in the coupling of the second, that the loops may take hold one of another. And thou shalt make fifty touches of gold, and couple the curtains together with the touches, and it shall be one tabernacle. So that was my final example, where we see Jehovah has been a God of order. So now let me just take the time just to admonish the church a bit, and God has laid this up in my heart just to speak to you all about it. And it's just two issues. Now there are a lot of issues to be dealt with, but just these are two main ones. And this is, ties into the message that he is a God of order. Firstly, I want to talk about the length of church services. Now, whether it be 8 to 10, 11 to 1, 7 to 10, the fact remains that, you know, as Christians, we have become indisciplined in that, you know, we go overboard. Now, when we try, or oh, God's heart is, is set for evangelism, for souls to be, to be one, 
and we don't realize that sometimes there are certain obstacles that actually cause people not to be saved or to come and know God and the length of church is one of them you know we can't be we can't be branded as liars when we say that you know we're gonna have two hour three hour services and we go beyond that and use the Holy Spirit as an example as a as a excuse and say that he took over so I'm not saying that this may not happen but the fact remains that God is a God of order and you may have invited persons to church and you know the service from 8 to 10 and at 11 30 an altar call is now being made now the person may have been touched by the word but because they, they probably are not accustomed to being in church for so long or they made other plans because they were promised that the service is going to end at 10 they may have crept up or they may not stay at all or they would not go up because they believe that the service would be prolonged and because of that a soul would not have been saved this ought not to be we need to maintain order the second issue is one more or less it, it's a bit of embarrassment you know god doesn't embarrass people and we ought not to embarrass persons and it's the issue of tithes and offerings you know we believe in a principle of sowing and reaping but there are some churches where there's a dollar line there's a hundred dollar line there's a twenty dollar line and even though this may be used as a means of checking the figure is better you know it embarrasses people and this ought not to be you know instead we should just take up the offering and just do that take it up not pass around the basket let people come up not separate them to embarrass them so those are just two issues that I wanted to, to deal with and other people would address other issues from time to time I would also address issues as they arrive and God, God places it into my heart. So I trust that you have been blessed by this message and I pray that you would look forward to my next message. Now, it, I, I would have liked it to be this one, but God said that it's going to be the next message and it will be the continuation of disobedience leads to death, obedience leads to life. So I just want to say that, you know, let us remember that we serve a God of order and we ought to follow his his principles you know because if we have to love God and really mean it we need to follow his commandments not just the ten commandments but every law and we have the Holy Spirit to help us so I trust that you've been blessed and I pray that you have a great weekend and a great week and until then stay blessed goodbye